Now a live look at the roads in Oakland County. We have all been there. You're driving on a stretch of road, you're humming along, and then you seem to hit every single red light. Well, there's engineers over at U of M and they're working on a new timing system that would reduce the number of times that you get stopped at intersections. They're testing this out at more than a dozen intersections in Oakland County. In Farmington Hills, they're testing four signals along eight mile from Orchard Lake to Brentwood Street. That brought a 30% reduction in delays and 40% reduction in stops. Then over in Royal Oak, they tested it out on nine signals along 12 mile from Vincenna Boulevard over the way to North Connecticut. That brought a 20% reduction in delays and stops as well. To talk about how this works, we are joined by Zachary Jerome with the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute. Zachary, thank you so much. Uh, please forgive my crass question, but why haven't we done this sooner? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very good question. I'd love to dive into that. First, let me talk a little bit about sort of the existing uh, procedures when it comes to traffic signal retiming. You know, so, you know, Oakland County operates over, the Road Commission for Oakland County operates over 1,400 uh, intersections in the county, and it's very difficult to understand the performance or the monitoring. It's very difficult to monitor what's happening at those intersections. Uh, the current detection systems often are at the intersection. If you think of uh, loop, in-ground loop detectors, some, some uh, of your listeners or uh, audience may have seen them in the road or there's often cameras, but those can be very expensive. And so because of that, most of the intersections in the county don't have any sort of monitoring capabilities. So it's very difficult to uh, monitor what's actually happening at the intersection. And when that comes to signal retiming, you know, we're trying to reallocate the green time to different approaches at that intersection. You, It's very important that you have that information. And so our system, we're using uh, anonymized GPS data uh, from a variety of sources. Uh, this is becoming increasingly available through existing sources that are already uh, in, you know, commercially uh, in, in the field, such as roadside assistance, navigation, or ride hailing. Uh, but no one's been able to leverage this data uh, for the specific application of traffic signal uh, retiming. And so that's where we come in. We're using this data specifically to uh, monitor. And because of this uh, capability, this, it's very scalable. It's, it's available across the entire county. Yeah. Uh, it provides us new coverage across the entire county to be able to monitor what's happening at these intersections. Gotcha. Okay, so b before we dive into to what you're working on, I wanted to ask you, going backwards, before you stepped in and before, you know, the loop sensors and the cameras, was it kind of a best guesstimate based on speed limits and traffic flow of what the signal timing should be? No, so normally what would happen, uh, the, you know, because of the lack of monitoring capabilities, most traffic signal retime, uh, most traffic signals operate on what's called a fixed pattern, meaning that they have fixed amount of green time for each intersection and it just loops throughout the day. And what engineers usually do to uh, uh, program those parameters or, or determine those parameters is you would collect data through a temporary traffic count study either through uh, maybe you have someone go out there and actually count cars or you would put in some temporary detection many people driving the road probably see those little uh, um, uh, uh, tubes that are laid across the road those are actually counting the number of vehicles uh, but the disadvantage is this is a temporary study. And then once you use those volumes, you would input that into a model and then develop a model that would optimize the traffic signal retiming. But this was usually only done every three to five years just because of the limitations that I described earlier. And then how, again, look at the, the old way, how would you, let's say, calibrate one intersection to the next so there is a direct flow of traffic without stopping? Yeah, that's a very good question. So a lot of times, you would input all those trajectories uh, in a model and you would, like you said before, you would, you can estimate the speed limit or in many cases you can estimate the, what, what's called in traffic engineering terms, the free flow speed, uh, which meaning, you know, from those detection methods I mentioned before or those traffic count studies, you would also do what's called a speed study. And then that way you would, you know, like you said before, estimate the time it takes to, to travel between each intersection. Um, one of the main challenges though, a lot of times is it's difficult to coordinate both directions. So a lot of times engineers have, um, you know, they have to make a decision, which direction are they going to prioritize? Mm, gotcha, okay. So uh, for, the, for the layman then, it sounds like what you're doing is taking best guesses and now using actual data instead of guessing. 
Yeah, I would say, you know, before it was actual data in the sense that they were collecting it, you know, temporarily. But what we're doing now is being able to collect it uh, in, in uh, across, you know, 24 seven across mm -hmm. the entire year. Yeah. And so basically, you know, our method is we're, we're building on what was already a pretty good system that just wasn't able to iterate or, you know, be uh, executed uh, on a frequent basis. And now because of the data, we're able to do it more frequently and we're also able to actually identify where the problems might be. See, before, if you wanted to do an optimization, you had to sort of just pick, you know, because of that three to five year rotation I mentioned right. before, you would have to sort of just maybe rotate through all the intersections on a schedule or if there was just, you know, it, it was sort of just, okay, we decided to do this corridor at this time of, 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 of uh, at this time. Now with the data of being able to scale the entire inter, uh, the entire county, we can actually pinpoint where we think traffic signal retiming would be the most beneficial. And this is very important because a lot of agencies, they have limited resources. And so to be able to know exactly where they should devote their energy in terms of signal optimization uh, is really helpful for them. So you mentioned before that eight mile uh, corridor and that 12 mile corridor, we were able to identify that those particular corridors would benefit from our retiming system because we scaled, because we scanned or, or the entire county. Gotcha. So looking at the data you're collecting now and analyzing, are you finding that some signals need to be shorter or, or longer? How are you enhancing the traffic flow? Yeah, it really kind of just depends on the, the data. Sometimes, you know, you want uh, shorter times, a lot of other times you want uh, longer times. Um, it really just kind of depends on the volume of traffic at that intersection, which can fluctuate, uh, you know, year to year. Um, especially if you're considering, remember, you know, COVID had a large impact on traffic volumes. Uh, there's also, you know, specific special events that might impact those volumes or just changes in um, factory shift schedules. Yeah. Those sorts yeah. of things happen quite frequently. And, and, you know, we're able to monitor those changes from this data. And that allows us to, to be able to determine, um, you know, what, the, what changes have to happen. But I will say when it comes to the coordination that you mentioned before or being able to travel along the road, uh, without having to stop it a lot of times the actual timing of when the green starts is more important than the duration of the actual mm, green time gotcha and so what we're trying to do is you know you know using this data we can trace how long it takes vehicles to travel between each intersection so i know you're working with the road commission of oakland county i, I can only assume that wayne mccomb washtenaw everybody else probably would like a slice of this um are there conversations about utilizing this data you know more broadly throughout Metro Detroit? Yes, we, we are um, trying to communicate that. I will say, you know, this first project that we've been working on was a uh, USDOT sponsored uh, um, project. It was through their Smart Grants program, mm -hmm. which was a really useful way, uh, a really useful tool for us to actually uh, explore and try to figure out how does how can this system be implemented in the field. It gave us a really unique opportunity. You know, we're we're researchers in Ann Arbor. We do a lot of thinking in the lab and trying to think, oh, will this work? But the USDOT grant actually gave us the opportunity to test this in the real world. And so now we're building building sort of the the um, the procedures and the plans that would mm. you know help us to uh, implement this across the entire uh, the entire um, across the larger area like right, you said right. like uh, across the southeast Michigan and so that was through their stage one the smart grant program is a, is a two stage solution so in that stage two we would apply for uh, and hopefully that would allow us to expand this system across the south uh, the southeast portion of the state. All right, Zachary Jerome, the U of M Transportation Research Institute. Thank you so much. I, I can't wait to see real time data. We can actually just look at what's happening in real time and change the traffic signals as we go. I'm sure that's step two of your process though. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> Zachary, thank you so much for your time this morning. Awesome. Thank you.